Greetings and welcome to Goblins of Elderstone. I'm Catherine of Sky, and first of all, I need to tell you that I received both a game key and a sponsorship from the developers Outer Dawn, and a huge, huge thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Um, and I'm really excited about this game, and there is a free demo this weekend that you should definitely check out. This is a really adorable, cute city builder that's very approachable to newcomers to the genre, and you can also min-max it if you want to. So we're going to just start a brand new game today, and I want to show you how it's played. So here we go. So we're going to set up a brand new game. Look at this turtle table, isn't that great? Um, so we're going to start off with our mythology and what we want to do in this game. So we're going to choose our tribe's origin story first. Okay, what is our creed? Ruby Eye, first of the goblin, asks of the gods above. How will we live in the days to come? So we have, we could be good, you are small, but your hearts are great. We could be neutral, your ears are keen and your thoughts are agile. Or evil, your eyes are sharp and your teeth are deadly. I don't know, I kind of feel like maybe going neutral here. Your ears are keen and your thoughts are agile. Let's play that. Silver Fay descends from the sky to walk with Ruby to the crossroads of destiny. Which path shall we goblins take? Asked Ruby Eye of the gods below. The path of blade and blood. So that's a war path. Trade, the path of cunning and coin. Or faith. The path of prayer and power. I kind of want to go with like trade. I'm really into that kind of thing. Golden Tongue rises from the earth to walk with Ruby Eye along the chosen path to the woods of wonder. What secrets shall I find in the shadows of this forest? She asks the gods who whisper through the leaves. Silver Fay leans against a tree and listens. Golden Tongue watches from a wary distance. Let's see, what do we got here? Divine, a glade bathed in sacred sunlight. Uh, nature, a mighty stag coursing with life. Or arcane, an ancient tomb of vaulted dreams. I have no clue what we should pick here. This is, what secret shall I find? Let's go nature. Moon Ghast emerges from the woods and returns with Ruby Eye to her citadel in the misted hills. The air stinks of death. Goblin skeletons are scattered upon the scorched earth. Who did this? demands Ruby Eye of the gods beyond the veil. Who took my children from me? Silver Fay listens with pity. Golden Tongue peers at the bones. Moon Ghast pokes at the embers. All right, so we can look and... Oh, wait, did we? Huh? Okay. Nature and orcs. Did we... What did I just do? I think I skipped the last choice. No! Okay, sure. I think, I think orcs are the enemy. Um, all right, so our choices have created this pantheon. Can, we can't go back. Wait, did that just... Okay. Just gonna do it again. Just gonna do it again. We'll do... Yes, yeah, story creation. Good, good. We chose neutral, and then we chose trade. And then we chose nature. Last one was... Okay. Enemies. These are our enemies. Orcs. Orcish fury is a ravenous fire. Dwarves will do anything for gold. Elves only care for their reflections. And humans, the human dream is a goblin nightmare. Oh, who shall we go against? Maybe dwarves, because that, that kind of makes sense. I mean, we're into trade. Maybe we have a lot of money. Okay, so there we go. Uh, next. Good. So now we can see what this all ends up to be here. So, we have copper face. Now, these, as our goblin city grows and each of the goblin or each of our goblins starts to begin to um, worship these gods, uh, we get some activations of spells. Usually, the first one is going to be a passive, and the others are going to be purchased with um, juju, which is like a magical energy stuff, kind of like mana ish. 
So we have these different kinds of things. Fertility blesses you with one additional baby per birth. That's really good. We have Silver Fay, increases the chance to gain higher tiered resources during trade treks. And then you can read the rest of these. And then we have um, Moonghast. Again, shamans get two plus two damage, create undead, uh, gain a necromancer champion. That sounds pretty good. Golden Tongue increases the success chance of your trade treks. It's like a uh, traveling traders kind of thing. Smooth talker during your next successful trade trek. Your relationship with the civilization will increase further, etc. Et cetera. So let's go next. And let us choose a place to live. I'm going to go ahead and maybe randomize this. Gobleton. That sounds great. We want to have all of these at least moderate. Maybe food being plentiful. That would be nice. Actually, this is pretty good. This is actually pretty... Well, we have medium threat. I would prefer a medium threat. Let's see. Food is scarce. Eh. Moderate. What was that one? Err. Let's just randomize it again. See if we can get something. I'd rather have a low threat. I'm not really a big fan of the, the medium threat. Err. No! No high threats. Go away! Ah! This is looking good! Okay. Food moderate, wood moderate, stone is plentiful. Threat is low. Let's go with that. Okay, so we have our new beer burper clan. Oh my god. Okay, so what I, um, okay, uh, let's see. Clan has a good distribution of stats. Um, okay, so we need, what we need to do is I like to pick stats that have, we have high ones in certain things. In my experience of the game is we need lots and lots of trade stats because the trade stats are basically not, not trading as in money. They are working trades like they're lumberjacks or haulers or this kind of thing. We need a lot of these people. We could also use a couple of um, high war stats people, but not that many. So let's take a couple of war people we need those for like watchtowers and stuff. Um, and then we want maybe one faith person, but we could even put a, whole, a low faith person in. We really, really just want these trade people to come in. Now, some of them do actually have extra stats, which some of them are positive and some are kind of negative. Um, so we're just gonna, if they're, if they're, oh, this has carrying capacity. That's actually really good. Speedy, movement speed, yay. What do you have? Worker. Ah, that's tasty. Okay, we're going to take these. Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and enable the tutorials just so they give you kind of a good overview of what's going on here. We can uh, spend more money on resources if we want. Um, I think we're kind of good with what we have. So let's go ahead and just accept this. Um, in my first game, I chose kind of like a balanced choice of ha part, you know, a third faith people, a third trade and a third, uh, war, but you don't need that. You really don't. You we need very few war or faith in the very beginning. Okay. We're going to go around the map here and try to find the best place to settle. What? Oh my gosh, this is actually really good. So what we have here is you can see this funny looking tree and it has an icon above it. This is what's called an elder uh, resource node. So this happens to be a berry node, that's food. We also have an elder rock node, which is rocks, and an elder tree right next door. So this is actually absolutely wonderful. Um, so we're gonna place our village center somewhere like right here maybe. We're gonna pause the game while we do stuff. So our people, our little goblins are here. There they are, they've arrived. Um, so what we need to do is build a great hall, a grand hall. Um, and you don't need to have all the resources before you construct it. They can go and gather stuff. Now, what you see here is our city, our area of influence. So what we want to do here is one, what we want to expand this and let's see, um, the grand hall. I'm going to go ahead and see if this, I forgot if this actually increases our, oh, okay. There we go. A tiny bit of lag there. But um, see if this is, increases our 
uh, build area. I think it probably should. But the other thing that increases our build area is building a warren. Now, a warren is a house, a homestead for our goblins. So these are going to be throughout our colony so that we can expand our colony's influence. So let's go ahead and just going to click the prioritize construction on the grand hall. Now we have nine goblins that are peons, right? So a peon is basically a goblin that doesn't have a specified job, uh, which we'll see in just a second as we'll assign them jobs. Um, and peons also, um, they, what they do is they go out and collect wood. You see some, someone is collecting berries over here. So yeah, Mona Beer Burper, what a name. Oh my goodness. But, um, so what they'll do is they'll collect resources. Like they'll collect stone from this elder resource rock pile here. Uh, and also we have tree, elder tree over here. Um, and so they're going to collect those different items. So you always want to make sure that you have plenty of peons to do stuff like that. So we're building a warren here. Uh, I'm going to let them finish and then we're going to build more stuff. So let's look at this. Oh, that's really cute. Isn't that adorable? So those are our banners. I forgot to choose the banner. Um, I'm sorry. This is the banner that I chose for my test game. And I just put it as a standard. But you can choose the icon. You can choose the colors. Sorry I didn't show that to you. But yeah, you can customize that to your liking. So now we need to assign a breeder. So we go look at the breeding here. And we see we have Gnorsh is our king. So what I would recommend you to do is this. I think it's good to have two breeders. So you are speedy. That doesn't really matter. What are you? Worker. Oh, no. All right. Well, let's take these two. And we can always replace them later because what you really need is lots and lots of population in this game uh, to start out with. So anyway, we're going to try to get these uh, trees going on here. Uh, but now we need to build a storage place. Uh, oh yeah, it does increase our area. So kind of put that on the edge of your starting zone. That's pretty handy. Now storage, let's just put that kind of, let's put it in between the, these trees and stuff. Because why not? I mean, it's a good place. Um, I'm going to also go ahead and build another warren over here. Uh... Again, kind of on the edge. Can turn these around a tiny bit and get those bridges a little bit more organized, if you like. Um, all right, so we're building warrens to extend our AOE, our area of influence, or AOI. Is that a thing? AOI? Area of influence. No, probably not. I've never heard of it. Anyway, our storage um, is done. Where is it? It's right over here. Of course it is. Uh, so what we need to do is make sure that we have a hauler and I want to actually, can we, hmm, strong, strong is good. Increased carrying capacity. And also we're looking at this, um, the yellow stat as well. So they are now bringing stuff there. Uh, the peons will also help haul things and collect stuff from elsewhere. Uh, so our goblins need basic tools. So we need to start making a crafting hut. We'll go to the trade tab for that. Um, and we'll go ahead and build one of those. Kind of in the middle here seems great. Can we have it connect to all three? Hello? Eh? Why not? Seems like it should connect. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. I'd rather have it connect to the storage. That's a good idea. Uh, okay, so let's see. We also need to have a woodcutter hut kind of near here because we're going to cut down these uh, the tree. Uh, well, we're going to cut down the trees that spawn near the tree, I should say. Um, and then that person, we need to have a kindler. Now, I want to see if we can build another warren out here so that we can extend our... Um, our our area that we can build in basically crafting hut complete excellent okay so we need to have a crafter assigned so we're going to assign somebody with great crafting skill because they got to build a lot of stuff here they got to build tools and also weapons now note that we're only at 55 percent and that's because we don't have another crafter assigned but in the early game you really don't have a lot of people at all so the next thing we want to do is prioritize construction here of the woodcutter's hut. 
And then we built the warren. Let's get that going as well so that we can build the other thing, which is the kindler, which is going to help us make firewood. Yeah, we definitely need a lot of uh, wood now. So they're bringing stuff, doing things, all the things. Uh, meanwhile, while they're doing stuff, what we can do is that... Oh my god, we have two rock thingies? Holy fuzzy cats. That's pretty great. I don't see... Oh, we do have gravestones out here. We need to be careful of that because gravestones can spawn nasty gravy... Gravy. No, not gravy. <laughs> sauce! Oh my god, sauce! Oh, okay. Let's see what's out here. But yeah, gravestones can seem to be kind of everywhere here. So um, we need to eventually mark them for cleansing, but we don't have any shaman yet. Uh, that is a later land thing. We need to get through early land first. Okay, so let's see. We have Mona. Let's put Mona here. And then they're going to work on that stuff. And then we can do the Kindler. Wait, is that the Kindler? I thought this was the Warren. Hello? Oh, no, that's the Warren. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to cancel this. I thought that we were doing a Warren here. Because we really need to get this extended somehow. Some magic way. Let's put this here. And then we'll build the Kindler once this is done. Let's prioritize this particular one. Okay, and as you can see at the top, top of the screen, we can see how much food we have, how much, how many rocks, how many sticks, logs, uh, firewood. We are actually out of logs. We need, I like this. This is really handy. So we have the number on top that we actually own and the number that is demanded at the bottom. It's pretty cool. I like that. So they're working as fast as they can over here. We might need another hauler, I'm thinking, or maybe a closer storage. Maybe let's do that. Let's put in a new storage building here once we get this um, building site done. I think that's a good idea because, like, we're going to have the kindler and some other wood processes over here. And this is just going to be easier to put into storage if the storage is not 10 miles away. Of course, that'll mean having another hauler, but, yeah, we should do that. All right, so this is going. 18 logs are made. We are really needing to transfer those logs. Go, go, go. It's kind of weird because you don't see the logs leaving. That's a bit weird. But now the construction is happening. Now the calendar over here is at the very top is what we are dealing with. So the winter is quite long and we need to have kindling by then to have a fire or firewood so that every every building needs firewood so that the, the, um, the goblins don't freeze to death. <laughs> it's kind of inconvenient to freeze to death as a goblin, gotta say. I like this. Look at the building. It's so cool. I love the like the little axe that hangs off of it. It's kind of neat. Okay, let's pause the game for a moment. And you can see what the Warrens need and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we have their inventory and then um, clan chief. But we're not going to be doing any clan chiefing right now. We are going to be building storage. So let's build a storage building. Here it is. Okay, we're going to build this maybe like right here. That seems good. So let's prioritize this. I also want to build another Warrens out here. Just, yeah, there we go. And that way, we won't have to have this long trek all the way across over here to get stuff and things. Um, but we also want to build the Kindler. There's a tavern, there's a well. Let's put a let's put in a well. Uh, because that is also used to help fire, fight fires and stuff. Um, the trees and all this other stuff at the bottom is decorative stuff. Uh, They're purely decorative and they don't provide any other stuff to the village. So let's see. We want to get our kindler. There we go. Build that next. There we go. Nice. Uh, all right, storage completed. One new adult, join Beer Burper. That's great. So let's get a hauler here. 
Oh my gosh, Beard is great at doing stuff. Let's make him a Kindler. Let's do the Kindler's stuff. Stuff and things. The whole game is really cute. It's got these very kind of like um, goofy looking graphics and stuff like that. The well is complete. Good. So that's over here. This does not uh, require any kind of employees. All right, Kindler is working. This is a really important job. Um, so it's it's really good to have a good, uh, good employee here. 65%. Build a watchtower. Okay, so now the game is telling us you're in trouble. Hmm. So we're, we're going to need to build multiple watchtowers probably. But let's just start with one. Let's build one. Let's start with one here. Because there are gravestones in this area. Um, now then this one. We probably need a watchtower over every one of our en entrances and exits. So... There's one over here as well. Put one there. Actually, I don't know how we get up here. Maybe over there is better because... Um, yeah, that makes more sense, I think. So if we take this one, we just have it here. Okay, all the entrances can be uh, defended from here. Because you get this entrance over here... And you have this one over here. Down here, there are actually no entrances. So we're we're actually fine there. And then this one is defending this area, which is a big area. Okay, so let's go ahead and prioritize this one. We don't know where the... Oh, wait. Oh, they're rising there. Okay, so what we need to do is probably get the other watchtower done, which is here. Prioritize the watchtower there. Go, go, go. Okay, now I like the, I love these like little ramshackle bridges and they have like little bridges or stairs leading up to them. I think it's pretty cool. It looks fun. Oh, we have bones here. How fun. Interesting. Um, all right. Uh, so we have the Kindler here. This is the Warrens. What did we, did we add anything important? No, I don't think so. I think we're actually okay with most of the stuff, except we do need this um, watchtower completed soon. going to turn this on three speed after after the beginning initial setup phase of the city it does get a little bit slow and i wish for like 12x speed or something um but it is very chill to play so it's kind of a different pace than than many other games that i play which i try to go really fast in them just because i find it fun, really fun um but as you'll see this you know just um yeah Watch the pacing and see if that's for you. That's always a good thing. So we have this watchtower going here. We need two more logs. Those are just the ones from trees. Uh, because there are, the firewood looks a bit similar. It's like a bundle of loggy thingies. Okay, there we go. This is, we have four there. Really need to get stuff going. Oh. Okay, enemies have spawned. This is not ideal. We really need to get this going, guys. Come on. Construct, please. And you can see we have snow falling. Uh, that snow is a little bit not ideal as well. Okay, we're going to pause and get our two martial people in here. Both of them for now. Um, until we finish the other watchtower. I'm going to go ahead and prioritize that watchtower. Um, just in case we need it. But as you see, they are standing uh, at the watchtower. One of the annoyances that I've had with the watchtower, though, is that sometimes at night when the zombies tend to, or the, uh, what do you call them? The skeletons or whatever, when they come, it's nighttime. And guess what? The watchtower guys are in their beds. And I'm like, what? Hello? How is this functioning? Like, this doesn't even make sense. So anyway, um... 
That's a strange thing to me. Really strange. Odd thing. But we'll see how they act and uh, see how it goes over here. Okay, now it's telling us to build a trade hall to help prioritize jobs for the goblins. We can also trade with other people when you build a trade hall. So it's pretty handy. Let's go ahead and just build that here. Let's see, if we move it with Q and E, we have a little bit more uh, of those thingy-jingies. Okay, there we go. Let's slow it down so you can see what happens here. So they are shooting these skeletons with arrows, kind of. You see, they're like, well, this guy's not doing anything. The one guy is shooting with arrows. Um, apparently, the other guy is just walking through. But as they die, they do drop a resource called bones. And those will be collected uh, at some point. So let's see. This uh, Uz Uztor, let's put you in the other watchtower. Uh, yep, Uztor, you go here. Okay. Very good. So we can kill the goblins this way until we can get those shaman to clear out um, the gravestones. So... Trade Hill is getting organized, as are the building warrens, uh, building of warrens, I guess. This one should be prioritized. By the way, you can't click multiple places to prioritize, at least not building sites. You can click, like, bushes to prioritize. That's always fun. Like this, you can tell them to, like, go to priority collect these things. I kind of wish there was, like, a click drag or click priority for this. Um, but yeah, that's not, uh, existing right now. Um, so here we go. That's almost done. Okay. Goblin. One new baby has been born. Yay. Buildings. Watchtowers are completed. Danger. Okay. We've already done that. Trade hall. We're getting it. Okay. We're done pretty much. Oh, second undead horde r will rise again soon from here. So what we can do though, is we can actually start building, uh, temple. Uh, and there's a shaman hut as well. Maybe we need to build a shaman as well. So let's go ahead and build a temple. Let's see. I don't see anywhere on the ground. Oh, that's fun. Does that, oh, that actually gives us another pathway. That's pretty snazzy. I thought they always had to go down these stairs, but I guess not. Warrens have been completed. Okay, fantastic. Go ahead and prioritize this one next. And then we'll get this uh, other thing done. And let's go ahead and build a... Okay, assign goblins to brew medicines. Um, but the shaman hut gives us shaman to protect the village. Then we also have voodoo production as well. But this requires... Okay, we get tools. We get shiny... Obtained from raid or trade treks. So we can't actually build anything because we don't have anything shiny. Um, so yeah, that's kind of rough. Kind of rough. But what we probably need to do is do a little bit more uh, war stuff. Ooh, one new adult join. Oh, okay. We have more skeletons coming in. Let's see. Is anybody on duty? Yep. Gnox is there to save the day. Um, let's see. Goblins become warriors or scouts to send on raids. We get tools. We need cloth. I forgot about the cloth. So we need to find where we have a cloth um, thingy. Okay, so they're going to start to climb this tower uh, as they, they're getting killed by he's trying to hit them. Apparently he's not doing as well as we wanted him to. Okay, so now that this one is in front of him, he's going to have to do some melee combat here. Oh, you can do it, dude. You can do it. Do, do, do. Arr. Okay, but we do need to get that temple going. Let's prioritize that. Okay, we didn't die. But um, the shaman can go around and heal people. And we definitely need that to happen. Uh, we might even need to just have another warrior here. Let's have Tink go here for now. But remember, that leaves us with only three peons. And peons are kind of the the lifeblood of, uh, of our colony because they carry stuff around. They do things. It's really important. So yeah. But yeah, let's get this temple going on and we can invite one of the deities to live there. Um, I kind of have an idea of which one I want. 
get rid of this. Go up and under attack. Yes, I know. Thank you very much. Go away. Go away. All the things go away. Uh, let's see. We have zero firewood. This is not a good situation. Hopefully nobody dies of cold. That would be extremely not good. Um, but yeah, we have the Kindler is working. There is four logs and zero firewood. Um, yeah, these buttons, I'm going to talk about those in a little bit once we get the, uh, I, um, a place made to collect some stuff. Oh, oh, look at this. We got a frog pond. Oh, that's lucky. That's really lucky. Because in my test game, the frog pond was really far away. Now here we have herb plants and we also have hemp plants. Now hemp is for making cloth, which we're going to need very shortly. So what we want to do definitely is we want to put in a, it's a trade building called a scavenger hunt. There, hut, not hunt. Scavenger hut. Oh, okay, there's a tiny bit of lag there. Um, okay, let's just put this here. And we want to get that done soon. We'll go ahead and also put another scavenger hut down here. Uh, yep, build right here. Let's just put it kind of this way, where it's sort of facing the frog pond, but they can also get out toward the village. Okay, more skeletons here, here. Oh my gosh, how many do we need? Good lord. Maybe what I'm going to do... Oh yeah, we already assigned two people. Okay. So now we need to assign a goblin at the trade hall to become a trade prince. Uh, so let's do that. Oh, we aren't... Oh, that's the temple, not the trade hall. Let's pause a second. Grand hall, trade hall. Here we go. So our trade prince, who do we want to have? Maybe fall die? Do we need it? Do we really need him? Okay, let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and put in here. Now here, this is nice. We have these collect berries or we have either up or X. Now I really, really wish the scavenger hut was like that because it does very strange buttons, which we're going to talk about. Okay, so we have tutorial complete. Excellent. Um, but now we have four people working at the, or two people at the watchtower to get those four skeletons. So they are coming in right now. So hopefully they're both going to start shooting because last time it got a little bit out of hand. So both of them are, are max health right now, which is good. Okay, it looks like one of them is working. Now both of them are working. That's good. They're trying. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, excellent. So that was a good thing. So we can get rid of this. Temple complete. Okay, so we can hire a priest here. We have, uh, Gabocha is five. So yeah, that's pretty good. So now here, this is one of the things that's the very same in one of these scavenger huts. When I see this, I click play to play. And then this means I need to pause it. But that's not how this game works. And I really wish they would just go check mark or X because this doesn't even make sense to me. It's horrible. But anyway, what they do at the temple is they have clear corpses because if our people die of old age or, or via the skeletons, they will just stay in place and they'll rot and make our people unhappy. They also heal goblins. They also spread faith. So what we can do is invite one of these deities. And I remember, let's see, um, this, the first one is the detriment. So be careful. If you don't have people worshiping, then you get into detrimental stuff going on. So here we have increased success chance of trade treks. Um, shamans get plus two damage. That seems good. Um... No, blesses you with one additional baby per birth. Well, we're going to take this one. Yes, thank you. Awaken. Good. So now we are kind of in this spot. You become a follower if your faith is between 20 and 50. So that's our God's powers. So soon enough, we're going to see all of um, the numbers rise here as our goblins start to follow this faith. Now, there was another one that looked good, another different god. So to get a different god to move in, you need to have a... Um, oh dear, my brain just fell down. Um, you need to have another temple. Only one god per temple kind of thing. So just keep that in mind. Um, we have... I think we're good right now. How are we doing on stuff? 
Okay, food is down. Everything else is down. But it's fine. We're going to be fine. What we need is more peons. So we want to kind of like pause building for now and let some of our children grow up. So what happens is... Oh, here we have a traveling merchant. Hooray! So we can sell stuff if we want to or we can buy stuff. So we don't have a lot of berries or frogs. Uh, we have zero frogs, in fact. Weapons, we have a few. Um, but I'm going to keep pretty much everything. I don't think we need to sell anything, maybe? I don't know. I think we're pretty good. I think we're going to be fine. I think it's going to be fine, yeah. We still have some stuff and things and berries and whatnot. We have 18, 20 berries already. Uh, we're moving into spring, as you see. Um, so children, when they're born, it takes three years for them to grow up. Now, a year, keep note here, spring lasts one year. Summer is three years. Winter is three years. So it's not like, you know, one season is part of a year. It's a very strange kind of cycle, this. And I don't really get it. Um, I don't really understand why they do that. Uh, so we had one new baby born. Relations. Copperface has awoken and demands worship. Hooray. So anyway, that's what we've got going on here. And we don't have any champions yet. They appear here when you summon them. Okay. And uh, we don't have that yet. But yeah, we have other kind of trade stuff going on with this god. But yeah, the, the extra births is really nice. Really, really nice. However, I don't think it works all the time. Because sometimes I'll have like... Three children were born, and it's like, okay, that doesn't make sense. Like, if you're supposed to gain plus one child every birth, like, you basically have twins all the time, as far as I can see. But how can you have three? You need to have four in that case. Now, this was interesting. Merchant will leave soon, and then it immediately closes the lock there. That's a little bit weird. But our mood here is overjoyed. Increases village birth rate. Goblins are less likely to riot. We also have the spell book here where you can choose the gods and see what you have going on here. So we have that one. One additional baby per birth. Um, let's see. This one. Okay. What do we got now? One new baby. See, one new baby is born. How is that possible? I thought it's supposed to be guaranteed that you get two. Okay, we're low on frogs. We have many desired, what not many made. So, oh, okay. Divine Light. So we have these random events as well. Just before nightfall, a ball of light suddenly appeared from the sky and started dancing around the village, attracting any nearby goblins. It then stops high above a large boulder as goblins gather at its base. Okay, so we have many things to do here. We can pray to the light, and we can either have, um, gain, this is a win-win. Let us offer an animal to sacrifice, which we don't have any pigs. Um, here we have, uh, let us con construct a shrine to the light. This seems pretty good. We get a lot of stuff here. Um, but we don't actually have, I can't click it. Oh yeah, because we probably don't have these items at all. Uh, so let's pray to the light and see what happens. Goblins suddenly hear voices, the voice of Copperface, who is delighted by our faith. A warm light shines on our village, filling goblin hearts with loving warmth. Outcome! Gnorsh Beer Burper gained plus five faith with Copperface and is now ne neutral. Okay, seems good. What are we missing here? Oh, planks! I forgot to build a plank maker. That's my bad. Okay, let's build a plank maker here which is the lumber mill. I forgot to build that, so let's just add it. Okay, go. So let's make this a priority. And then the other thing is we can build a weaver. We're gonna build this nearby this area because that's where we're gonna get the weaving bits and pieces. Okay, there is fine. Again, they have to go all the way down this uh, pathway here to come back and give us the uh, the hemp and the other stuff. But we need to get this. I forgot about this, and that's really bad, actually. We need to get this lumber mill done. Yes, thank you. 
Okay. We're good. Come on, folks. Build, build, build. Where are they going? They're going around here to go up there to get that. What were they doing here? Can't imagine why they would go all the way around that way. Because, like, if they go this way, there's, they're, they're right over here. They don't need, they can come back this way. They don't need to go all the way around. It's such a strange idea. Okay, anyway. I guess they're bringing the rocks or something. That makes me wonder if, like, they can't get through or something weird like that. But these guys can get through from this side. I don't really understand this at all. All right, in any case, we're going to build the lumber site, and it's going to be fine. We have five peons. That's a good amount to have right now, but we need to actually hire someone at the lumber mill. Okay, let's pause and choose a... Pr oh, chin stick. Yo, you work it. Work it, chin stick. Go, go, go. Also, sometimes you see on here goblins that are grayed out. Like this one is a hippie. Can only be assigned as a woodcutter, scavenger, or pig herder. Okay. And some of them can only have faith jobs and, and such and so forth. Okay, two babies were born. Also, that, see, that's the thing is like we have two, two breeders. Um, so, yeah. All right, let's uh, prioritize this place because we want to get the weaver going. So now, yep, Chinstick is working hard here. Doing all the things and all the stuff. We have two planks. Perfect. This is pretty great. Okay, one new baby born. Again, it doesn't make sense because we do actually have this tenet of faith. And so, you know, we're actually moving on toward the next uh, spill. So we can summon the merchant regardless of the season if we have enough juju, 10 juju it costs. Now we're not into making that just yet. Oh no, Peon Zephyr's beer burper has passed on, but that's okay. Um, okay, yeah, we we yeah we dispose of corpses, but the thing is, is you need to make sure that you change that you fill the job. Peons are fine because peons are just the extra people, but if like a person at the Kindler passes away then you have to replace that person. There's no automatic replacement, which I kind of wish there was, like it would replace with the highest level of skill that is needed kind of thing. But no, again, one baby born. How is that even happening? This should be, it says, blesses you with one additional baby per birth. Am I missing this somehow? Am I reading it wrong? Looks like it's okay. But anyway, um, you can have many temples. In fact, maybe we build that after we get this done. This is definitely needed. But yeah, we need the planks for that. How are we doing on everything else? Looks like we have uh, almost enough logs. Hey, <laughs> hey, logs. But we have tons of firewood, which is a really happy thing. So yay. Uh, we're going to have a lot of good stuff going on. Two new adults. All right, that's great. So now we can fill this place up. This is the gathering shack kind of thing. And they're going to gather stuff nearby. Again, they have those really weird buttons like the, the play pause thing. Uh, which are opposite if you ask me. But anyway. Um, I really like also this stuff. This like little lights in the ground. I think they look really, really cute and charming and lovely. Okay, let's see what else is going on. Morning, chicken crowing. This is funny. Look at this like little, um, I like the little handle on top. Every time they craft something, it's like, oh, that's cool. Making tools, making weapons here. Okay, how's this going? Needs, we have six. This is our lumber mill. Oh, they have like a, a saw blade on top. That's funny. Okay, Breeder. Okay, so one of the breeders has died. That's not good. So maybe we can choose another one. Nope. Uh, they have to be the correct sex. You can have either a queen or a king, and your breeder has to be the opposite in order to duplicate themselves. So that's important. But you can't choose, like, I'm sure there are, there are females around here that have jobs, but if they have jobs, they can't go around and be a breeder. 
Um, that's kind of full time, apparently. Nope, apparently the new. Oh, Town Watch. Oh, okay. Okay, so maybe we need to get. Yeah, we need to share the Town Watch. Let's go and take Tink out and put Tink in here. Uh, all right, Tink. Oh, wait, is Tink. We have a lot of goblins that are, yeah, let's take you out and give this one here. Oh, that's, yeah, that storage is fine, actually. Wait, are you strong? Ah, uh, yes, you are. Okay, so Mona, sounds like a female name to me. Uh, here, tanks, uh, no, 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 let's get Flunk in here. Okay, and then let's look at our breeders now. Oh, that's our Grand Hall. It's so weird that this is the Grand Hall and it's like smaller than the trade place. Uh, okay, let's get Mona. All right, Mona is a breeder. Hooray, congratulations. Um, so this is a Kindler. Yeah, that's good. Good, good. All right, have we gotten this yet? No, almost, almost. The first undead horde will come around. Oh, dear me. Okay, let's uh, hire... Oh, no! How did these people get out? It's weird. Okay, we have... No, no, no. Come back. Do not... Here, this one is 532, 523. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. They also don't have any special thing. Let's put Tink in here. That's fine. And then up here, we're almost done with this. So I'm excited to get these scavenger thingies going. Okay, okay, working, working it. Almost done. We're gonna turn off the things that we don't want them to do like bones and frogs. So we're gonna do those elsewhere. So we're gonna go ahead and get uh, Tengza and then who else? Kailash maybe? Toe curl. Hippie. Take the hippie. Yeah, let's do that. And Kailash as well. Uh, have all those people working there. And then here is our weaver's hut. So let's take... Let's see. Varm has three in trade. So I think that should be okay. Should definitely be okay. So now the building has purple banners because it's functioning and working. And also, this is a 3D game. You can you can move around and look at stuff. Looks like they have looms on the other side of here. But basically, these uh, these employees will go around to these two elder plants. We have a hemp plant and we have herb stock herbs. So the hemp is used for making fiber, obviously. And the herbs I think are used for making potions. Um, all right. So the undead horde are they? They're rising or not rising, folks. We don't even know. Anyway, we're in the autumn already, almost at winter. A bit crazy with time. Feels like the time kind of goes fast, but it's also really hard to kind of gather certain things and stuff like that. Let's see. We need now a blacksmith, uh, which we need from iron and more iron. Um, and then we can also get a stone mine if we need one. And those are, you have to build them around these giant stones. These can be quite difficult to find, but I think our map is tuned to have them rather than not. We'll just put one there. I don't know if we have a an iron mine somewhere. Now do be careful because the naughties will look like, look at this. This is a elder gravestone, you know? Uh, new gravestones will appear regularly, so that's not good. Um, so what's going to happen is if the horde comes from here, it's going to destroy the iron mine immediately, which is definitely not good. Okay, enemies have spawned. I don't know why it goes like red like this. I don't, I don't quite get that. It's supposed to be snow season, I think. And it's all of a sudden it's like bright orange. I don't really understand that. Okay, that one. Okay, got killed there. This one is getting a chance to go further in. But I think that's it, right? I didn't hear the third one. Oh, there's one this way. Okay, fascinating. All right, I thought they all would spawn in the same place. Anyway, um, I think we're kind of at a good place right now. 
So um, I'm hoping that our colony is doing well and all the things and all the stuff. It really is very cute. And uh, if you're new to city builders and that kind of thing, uh, I hope that you will um, check this out. There is a free demo on Steam. Um, so go ahead and find that. Again, it's called Goblins of Elder Stone. And uh, yeah, I hope you'll, uh, you'll enjoy playing. So thank you so very much for joining me. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you next time.